So this is our end goal for today, how to build a coilover and set it up for animation and rig it with only one bone. Okay, we're going to start up by uh, modeling all the parts and then we're going to animate it. Uh, so first off, I want to select the light and the cube and then press X to delete them. Then we start up by uh, pressing Shift A and creating a cylinder. Great. Then we can press Tab to enter edit mode. We can press number three to select on the faces and delete this top face. Great. Then we can take this part and press E and S and expand it upwards. And then E and drag it up. And then E and S and drag it in. And this will be a bottom part and E and S. Drag it up like that. And E and S. And E and Z downwards. Maybe we can press Alt Z. And activate X-ray mode. And then we can just press F. Great. And we can call this part bottom like that perfect and uh, we can leave x-ray mode and if we look upon it from the down here we can just add a another part that we keep it in place let's rotate it by pressing r and y and 90 and we can drag it down g and z somewhere here maybe we can take this part and just delete number three select that face Delete it, press 1 again to select vertices and E and S and then G and Z, get a little bit chamfer and then E and Z, like so. Then we can select this part, press tab to enter edit mode, number 3, you want to select faces, I want to select that face and that face and press X to delete them, then we press number 1 and press Alt, left click to select all the vertices in this line and then press E and S and then we can extrude this in X like that and now we want this to end up in this line so let's press G and X and then B so we say that I want this point to be in this point of line like that and we can then press shift alt left click to select these vertices as well and then I just want to bridge them with loop tools and to activate loop tools just go to edit preferences add-ons and search for loop tools activated and when you have done that you can just right click go to loop tools and bridge like that great and I want this to be one part so Let's select this one and this one and press Ctrl J like that. So this is one part. Great. Now I want to do the top part of this coilover. So let's enter edit mode. Select this ring. Press Shift D to duplicate it and right click and it's exactly where we copied it. And I want this to be a new part. So let's press P and separate by selection. Great. So press Tab to uh, exit edit mode and select this new ring. And we can call it top. Great, and now we press tab to enter edit mode. We select it and we can drag it down, G and Z, and drag it down a little bit. And then we press E to extrude in Z, and we can drag it up like so. Great, and then we can press E and S, and we can look upon it from the side, maybe a little bit bigger, like that. And then we press E and Z, and W E F S and maybe E and Z. Just create the shape that you want. And E and S like that. And E and Z. And E and S. And E. And E and S. And maybe G. E and yeah, you you will understand. E and S and F. So and I want to add some studs here. And the easiest way to do this is to activate Bolt Factory. So let's go to Edit again and go to Preferences, Add-ons, and search for Bolt. Bolt Factory, activate it. And now we can just bolts up here. But right now the 3D cursor is down here. And this is the place where new objects will appear. So we want to move this. And let's just look from the top. And then we can take that point and that point and select those two and press Shift S 
and cursor to selected and it will go to the midpoint of these two points like so okay and now we can press and we are in edit mode i don't want to be that i want to be in object mode so let's press tab and then we go to shift a mesh and go down to bolt and this bolt would be really tiny so if you just activate x-ray mode and then press comma on the numpad this is our bolt let's open this menu and i want my bolt to be the biggest one like that i don't want any shank length or at least not that long maybe just like so and i don't want any head like that Great, and I think this will do. So let's just select it and press S to scale it up. Like so, let's look upon it from the side. We press R and Y and write 180 and we drag it up G and Z like so. And if we now leave X-ray mode, we can see that, yeah, I want to make it bigger. So let's just scale it up and G and Z, drag it up something like that and now i want four of these so let's just mirror them so let's go to modifiers search for mirror and uh, mirror object with this part like so we can actually apply this mirror so press ctrl a and then we can select both of them and move the point of origin to object set origin to center of mass this will move this to the middle and now we can press shift d Right click, they are duplicated and rotated around said 90 degrees, like so. And now we can select these two, these two, and the top part and press J. And now all of this is one part. Great. And then we can just right click and choose shade out to smooth. And we can do the same for the bottom part, like so. Great. And now we want to add the spring. And the easiest way to do this is to add some extra curve tools. So let's go to edit again, preferences, and search for curve, extra curve objects. Check that one. And right now the 3D cursor is here. We don't want that. I want it to be down here. So let's select alt left click this ring and press shift S. Cursor to select it to get the cursor in the middle. Great. Let's go to object mode again and press shift A, curve, and go to curve spirals, actually medium. And we want to use this and we may want eight turns. And let's just set the height to be a bit higher, maybe like that. And let's look upon it from the side and just uh, make the radius bigger, something like that. Great. And now we can actually edit this because I don't want the curve to be like this. I want to be like a spring that's flattened in the end. So let's enter edit mode again. Let's select these parts and press S for scale. I want to scale it in Z and I want it to make zero out like that. And let's just press G and Z and drag it upwards. And let's do the same for the top part. Select all of these and press S for scale in Z and 0. And G and Z, drag it down. Like so, great. And now we have the spring. Let's press the data. Open up geometry. And go to this depth uh, value. And let's make it higher. Like so. Great. The easiest way here is just to g and z move this to the top like so and we can take the lower part and let's activate x-ray so alt z select all of these and press j and z and move it up like so to the bottom of the spring great so right now it looks kind of okay but we have a hole in the spring i don't want that so let's select it and just go down to bevel and Fill the caps like so. Great. And I think it's a good time to add some materials before we start to animate it. So we can start up by selecting the button. Let's go to material properties, add a new material. And we will just make really easy materials. So let's just call this 
um, blue and I want this to be some kind of bluish metallic color and uh, we need to change the shade mode and I want it to be kind of shiny like so and I want this to have another color as well so just hit the plus button and we can choose the blue again and just duplicate it let's call this one black and let's just change the color to black like so uh, and now we can go to edit mode and we can press number three only to select faces we can look upon this from the side and i want this part uh, to be selected and all of this part as well no actually i want only this part and then we can just press assign like so great uh, and then we can just go up to this part first off we can just add the black material and then we can add another material and i want the blue so let's just look upon it from the side what parts do i want to be blue all of this i think and we can shift alt left click so we get that order as well and i also want ah shift and drag that part and just assign like so and i want the studs to be another material as well so let's just press plus and then take the blue material duplicate it let's call it just steel and let's make it gray like so and now let's look upon the front side select all of these whoops just uncheck everything first then select all of these all of these look from another angle select all of these and all of these like so and assign great so now we have the coil we just need to make this spring a color also so let's take the blue duplicate call this pink and just make it pink or something i think this will look kind of cool great so we have our coil over let's animate it and i'm not sure why everybody using um, bones to solve this because it i think it's much easier just to solve it with constraints and maybe one bone so let's start out by selecting the bottom part and let's go to constraints and choose damn track and set the top part and i just realized let's undo this let's check our scale so this scale and the rotation is okay this scale rotation is okay and this scale rotation is okay great otherwise you just want to press ctrl a and apply rotation and scale but what i also can see is that we want to move our point of origin and i want to move the point of origin to the top so let's just press three and select the top part and we can exit extra remove as well and then we press shift s cursor to selected exit edit mode and go to object set origin to 3d cursor like that great and for this lower part it will be much easier later on if we have the point of origin in line with this spring so you can enter edit mode and let's just add a loop cut it's called here so press ctrl r drag it down uh, oops let's press alt z so we can see through this one and g z and put it in the middle something like that great and uh, let's go back and let's press shift s cursor to select it like that and then object set origin origin to 3d cursor like so great and then for this part i want the point of origin to be up here somewhere so we just take this part and maybe take alt left click and then shift s cursor to selected select this one object set origin the 3d cursor okay now we have prepped everything much better so let's do this again we select the lower part go to constrain damp track and then set it to the upper one it gets rotated no worries let's just press z we take the upper one choose damp track select the lower one and then minus z like that 
and if you not try to move the lower one they will follow each other so this is what we want great but as you can see we can drag this too far away and this one upwards too much also and we don't want that so we need to add some restraints so let's go to constraints again and limit distance to the top one so we have selected the bottom one and limit the distance to the top one and if i now trying to pull in this i cannot go any further downwards so this is great next step we try to move this upwards as far at as it can go somewhere here maybe and we add an other limit distance to the top and if we're now trying to move it nothing happened we can move it through this one and reason for this is that the clamp region is inside if we change this to outside we can now it works as we want to we cannot drag it through the object and we cannot drag it from the object further than this so this is great so the spring still not following so we want to take the spring and add a constraint child of this top part like so and if we try it now great but it's still not following the compression so we want to fix that and this is where i think to do this is just add one bone so um, let's press shift a and go down to amateur and add a bone right now we cannot see it so if you go here to data viewport display and then in front we can see the bone great right now it's pointing the wrong direction and i want this part to point where this origin is so we can fix this so let's just select this part press shift s and choose cursor to select it so now the cursor is here great we take this bone and i go to edit mode mode select the top part and just press shift s selection to cursor Great, so now it's attached and we have our bone. So let's fix this. Now we need to add some constraints and we want the bone to be a child of this top part. And I just realized we don't need this spring to be a child of this top part as well because we want this to um, be connected to the bone instead. So let's just delete that. And then we take the bone and we also want it to have a stretch to constraint so we want this bone to stretch to this part so let's just target the bottom and something happened and when when we did this this uh, target uh, we lost it so we need to set it straight again so let's just enter edit mode select the lower part and shift s selection to cursor like so and now we have the bone is a child of this top part and it's trying to stretch through the bottom part so if we select the bottom part and try to move we can see that the bones react to it but it expands it gets wider we don't want that so if we select the bone and change this maintain volume value to none it doesn't expand like that so this is great and if we just drag it back we now select the bones first and then we select the spring because we want the spring to hook on this bone as it's called so we press tab and then we press a to select all of the vertices in the spring and then we press ctrl h and choose hook to the selected bone and we press tab and if you now try to move this it works as we expect and there is only one bone in this setup so this is great so this is how we build a coilover and uh, how to set up a rig for an animation of the coilover with only one bone and i think this is much easier than a lot of bones and different steps and if you like stuff like this please like and subscribe bye